Hello everyone, this is Miss Valley Entertainment News. My name is Dredd. We're going to be covering a little bit of sporting news here, as I thought it was worth something maybe to talk about. Um, we don't cover a lot of sports news here, but when something catches my fancy or my interest, we do take a stab at it. Sporting, after all, is very much the entertainment industry, as is um, sports gambling. Something else kind of important here. Uh, for the story, and this is what I call a sad story. Now, do we know if the story is 100% true? No, of course, it's under investigation. But nevertheless, I think the fact that this could even come up could be a little bit of an eye-opener and something maybe worth discussing. Now, this is a basketball story. Um, I don't I don't get involved in a lot of basketball. I am an LA Lakers fan. I do follow them from afar. I mean, I'm, a, I'm kind of sort of the West Coast. They're the West Coast, right? I mean, I'm a, I'm a little farther north of them. Now, you may say, Dread, this is a Toronto Raptors story. You're Canadian. Toronto's in Canada, right? Right, eh? Right? So why are you not a Toronto Raptors fan? Because when the Toronto Raptors came into the league, they came in at the same time as the Vancouver Grizzlies. The Vancouver Grizzlies was the team I cheered for because I am very close to Vancouver, and that was exciting to have a basketball team there. I hope to one day even maybe get enough money to be able to go to Vancouver and watch this. That team never did before they folded and moved um, to Memphis, I believe. Um, yes, they were a bit of a disaster of an organization, but I support them nonetheless. And uh, as such, and as a West Coast person with Toronto being way far away, and, um, yeah, we don't tend to support a lot of Toronto teams out here. Um, this doesn't really happen. Uh, I admire I admire the Raptors um, as an organization, but I don't follow them, and I'm definitely not a fan. But uh, this does, again, it came across my news feed specifically because it deals with Canadian team and something happening. So it was easy for me to find this, and now we're going to comment on it. I'm going to link the entire thing down below. Let's get into it right now. This is Raptors reeling after backup center Jante Porter allegedly fixed games. Uh-oh. Bum-bum-bum. Did I mention this is Miss Valley Entertainment News, and my name is Dredd? I sure hope I did. By the way, don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment. And if you're subscribing, ring that bell for so you get notifications on when I put out more videos. Thank you all so much for your views. Let's uh, let's scroll down and get into this. The Toronto Raptors were still largely in the dark a day after it was confirmed that the NBA was investigating backup center Jonte Porter for allegedly fixing games. I was just praying for him, said small forward Bruce Brown on Tuesday after Raptors practice. Obviously, you don't want to see somebody go through something like that. But other than that, I mean, I don't know what's going on. I don't want to comment too much, but I don't know. Center Kelly Olenek of, or Olenek, I guess, Center Kelly Olenek, excuse me, of Kamloops, BC. Hey, that's, uh, that's about an hour and a half from where I am said that he and his teammates learned about the investigation surrounding Porter the same way fans learned through media reports. We don't really know anything is going on, so it's hard to comment on that, said Olenek. You reporters, you reporters, probably know more than us, which is how these things usually work. ESPN first reported the investigation on Monday night, about an hour before tip-off in Toronto between the Raptors and Brooklyn Nets. The American sports broadcaster said the probe included Porter's performance in games on January 26th and March 20th. Please note this says included. So it gives two examples of what it includes. Doesn't say that's all it is about, though. Uh, Porter played briefly in both games before leaving. Hmm. Citing injury or illness, he played four minutes, 24 seconds against the LA Clippers in the first of those games. Then he played 2 minutes and 43 seconds against Sacramento in the second game. In both cases, Porter did not come close to hitting the prop wager lines for points, rebounds, and three-pointers that bettors could play. A prop bet, short for proposition bet, is a wager not tied to the final score or outcome of a game. Although usually tied to the performance of a player or group of players, 
It can cover a wide variety of occurrences, including the color of a team's Gatorade or how long the singing of the national anthems will take. You gamblers are crazy. Uh, ESPN said the props surrounding Porter for the Clippers game were 5.5 points, 4.5 rebounds, and 1.5 assists. He finished with no points, 3 rebounds, and 1 assist. For the Kings game, they were around 7.5 points and 5.5 rebounds. Porter finished that game with no points and 2 rebounds. Raptors head coach Darko uh, Rajakovic said that, to the best of his knowledge, knowledge, no one on the team had been approached by investigators. Toronto Police Service, <coughs> excuse me. Toronto Police Service told the Canadian press that they are not investigating Porter, even though both games were at Scotiabank Arena. Nobody reached out to me, and as far as I know, they did not reach out to players," said Rajakovic, who added he did not know where Porter was. The investigation surrounding Porter is the latest twist in a disappointing season for the Raptors. Oh, for the Raptors. Uh, Toronto started its rebuild in earnest, dealing away starters Pascal S S S Pascal Siakam, OG and Unobi, and Dennis Schroeder in separate deals. Did they spell Schroeder wrong? Is there not an E in Schroeder? Maybe there's not. He wasn't on LA before. I can't remember if he had an E in his, in his name. After the O. Anyways, although Toronto's rebuild roster could potentially have a play at birth, injuries and other off-court issues scuttled any hopes of seeing the postseason. All-star forward Scotty Barnes, left-hand fracture, center Jacob Portal, left-hand torn ligament, swingman RJ Barrett, personal reasons, point guard Emmanuel Quickly, personal reasons, forward Chris Boucher, uh, partial MCM, L tear and guard DJ Carton, right ankle sprain, are all on the Raptors' inactive list. That's a lot of guys. Uh, Barrett from Mississauga, Ontario, took a leave of absence after the death of his younger brother. Quickly's absence has not been explained. Both practiced on Tuesday at OVO uh, Athletic Center and could return to the lineup soon. It's been really tough. It's been a gauntlet of injuries, off the court stuff, hard hitting stuff, said Olenek. Something you can literally not prepare for. You literally cannot prepare for. It's tough to handle as players, staff, organization, but I think it's one of those things, all in all, probably makes you stronger, makes you come together as a unit, and learn more. Brown said the players who have not missed time have just tried to keep their focus on the court. Half the stuff you can't control, right? RJ's situation, quick situation, you can't control those things, he said. The guys who are here, we just focus on what we can control, and that's hooping. We have games that we need to try to win, so that's our main focus. Published March 26, 2024, by John Chitley Hill of the Canadian Press over here in MSN.com. Again, this will be linked down below. I do think that when you've got these kind of bets happening, especially ones on specific players, um, and you've got a team who has no chance of making the playoffs, this kind of thing is probably more likely to potentially prop up. Prop up, par pop up. Um, you've got guys who could make money off somebody else's bets. You guys maybe got guys who owe favors or money to somebody else. That person then places a bet and they make sure they don't hit it. You know, these kind of things happening. Um, yeah, it, it doesn't surprise me. That's not to say that Jonte Porter is guilty. But if they're investigating, they've probably got some pretty good evidence of somebody associated with him either making the bets or someone who made the bets having contacted him. I'm going to guess one of those two, if not both, probably is something that caused them to look into this. So uh, my thoughts and prayers are with Jonte Porter as well. Here's hoping he's innocent and nothing's happened and he's found innocent. But at the same time, if he's guilty, I hope it comes out. And I hope this uh, helps to put a stop to this or maybe potentially going forward, put some stop gaps in place or make some players think uh, a lot more clearly about these kind of decisions. Certainly is a black eye for the league and a black eye for the franchise. And let me know down below what you think about uh, prop bets and betting and sports and players potentially getting involved in that or having their performance on the court 
go a certain way on purpose in order to affect betting lines. From Miss Valley Entertainment News, my name is Dre. Good night.